doesn't come naturally. You got to make yourself bless him. Hallelujah. It's got to be your will. Open up your mouth and let it come out of your spirit. Yeah, yes, 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 God. Yes, God, yes, God. Yes, God, yes, God. Have your way, God. Change us at this meeting. Have your way, God. Impact us at this conference. Have your way, God. Impart into us, God. And in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Put those hands together again. Yes, God. Yes, God. Now, as customary, as I customarily do, the persons on both sides of you, I want you to not to pat them on the back. I want you to grab them and hug them like they are your brother and sister. Embrace them. Embrace them. Both sides of it. If you don't know them, tell them your name. That's right. If you don't know them, tell them your name. Once you've been introduced, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Years I spent in vanity and pride caring not my Lord was crucified knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary oh mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me and there my burdened soul found liberty at Cal uh, you may not know this song but the last verse says now I give to Jesus everything now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Oh, see there was great and grace. Pardon there was multiplied. To me, oh, there, my burdened soul, my andas, found liberty. Had come, alas, and did my Savior bleed? Did my sovereign die? My God, help me. Would he devote Marcia that sacred head for such was it for crimes that I have done? He hung upon the tree. What a day! Grace unknown. And love beyond degree. My drops of grief could never repay the debt of love I owe. So dear. Myself to thee, that's all that I can do. 
Hallelujah. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and they give him the glory. Great things he ah sit down sit down you don't know these songs hallelujah uh, if you're going to praise him praise him never just pity that if you're going to praise him praise him I honor the Lord today for his greatness his kindness and I'm not going to be before you long for there are sessions that must be attended but to God be all glory and before we start any sessions, we give him the first fruit of the day. We give him the best of the day. We come and we gather together to hear from him and to worship him and to give him the glory that's due unto his name, to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Do I have any worshipers here? No, only a few. Oh, my. Maybe you've come to the conference for this time. Maybe you've come to learn how, but I want all the worshipers just to make some noise. Hallelujah. See, there's a difference between a praiser and a worshiper. Everybody can praise him. The trees praise him just by standing. The birds praise him just by flying. Everything that is and everything that has breath can praise him. But only those who are in covenant relationship can worship him. Only the true sons and daughters. I'm not talking about religious people. I'm talking about the real deal. Only the true born again, blood washed, redeemed sons and daughters of the most high God can give him praise, can worship him in intimacy. Do I have any sons and daughters in this room? Worship, 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 worship. Worship is not something 
that you can do on a dime. It's kind of misleading when people ask you to worship God right out of the clear blue. It doesn't happen like that. It's an intimate thing. It's something that you've got to work your way into. I don't hear you here. You don't just worship God by raising your hands. You've got to worship him in intimacy. Uh, it's got to be a private practice, something that's done outside of the scope or the sight of people. It's a bedroom experience for a better understanding. It's something that happens when it's just you, just you and him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's where he takes you away. Praise has always got to precede worship. Hallelujah. But you can praise him without worshiping. That's the problem with the church. We praise, but we never get into that intimate place. We want the jerk to shake the song, the tambourine, the drum, the shout. But God has set this thing up so that if we praise him right, Hong Kong, the Osea, if we praise him right, it gets him involved and it messes him up. I'm not even preaching this yet, but I only got a little bit of time. If we praise God right, see, not just going through the motion or singing the popular song, but if we really take our time to find out what is it that's your pleasure. Before we get started, ask what is it that pleases you? What do you want to hear? What song is going to make you happy? Now, I'm not thinking about me. What song is going to bless you? What's on your song selection for today? What's on your list? I'm going to sing what angels can't sing. I'm going to praise like angels can't praise. In spite of the hell I'm going through, I'm going to give you glory. Do I have any folk that are going through hell and still praising? And if you praise him right, Bishop Moses, if we praise God right, then God gets up off his throne and comes down. He pushes angels aside. Get out the way. What's happening? My children are praising me. Woo! They're going through hell and they're still talking about I'm great. They're in need and they're still talking about I'm a wonder. They're hurting and they're still blessing me. Get out the way. I got to go down myself. I wish I had somebody who could praise them real good right now. I need somebody to come praise them real good right now. They're crying and still saying they love me. And the scripture is fulfilled when the true sons and daughters start praising God. The scripture says he inhabits the praises of his people. That means he comes down, takes residence in your praise. And the more you praise him, the more he shows up. Uh, Y'all not hearing me? The more you praise him, the more he makes himself known. And if you praise him right, whatever you're going through gets pushed out of the way. Because God is too big to share the seat with your problem. Y'all didn't hear me. This God is too great. When he sits down, everything on the seat got to move. Sickness got to move. Depression has got to move. Bondage has got to move. Ah, if you praise him right. But praise leads you into, into if you get God's attention, and if you get God to come down and sit with you, tell me how great I am. Tell me how awesome I am. Tell me how wonderful I am. And I keep preaching this wherever I go. God can't take real praise. It gets to him. Because real praise is done out of faith. You bless God not because everything's okay, but because his credit is good and he promised that everything will be all right. So you can be as broke as the Ten Commandments and praise him for your prosperity. That faith gets him involved. I don't hear you. You can be sick unto death and praise him for your healing and God will reverse it. Oh, look at
look at somebody and tell them praise him, praise him. Look at him, tell him praise him. You want some help, praise him. You want a way out, praise him. You want deliverance, praise him. And if you keep on praising him, God gets excited and he boasts about you. Look at them, they're broken, but they're still talking about me. Look at them, they have needs, but they're still lauding me. And when it gets to that point, that's when God, this is where worship comes in. God grabs you and takes you up to where he resides. That's called worship. And that's where he can show you who he really, he can show you who he really is. He can take you out of your situation, take you out of your trouble, take you out of your problem, bring you to the place of peace, and just you. I don't hear nobody here. That's what worship does. And in worship, God talks to you. In praise, you talk to him. But in worship, you don't say much in worship. There's not a lot of noise in worship. There's sobbing in worship. Uh, you're laying low in worship. Because while you were down there, that's your terrain. And you hear about But when you come up here, this is his world. And you see how great he is. And when you see how great he is, you see how little you are. Hallelujah. And you lay down in front of him and say, I'm not worthy. And he starts to speak mysteries to you. And there's an intercourse going on that can never happen in the realm of praise. Some of you are missing out on some great things. Because what God wants to show you can never happen in the realm of praise. Praise is the vehicle that's supposed to bring you into the intimate place of worship. That's where God reveals. That's where God speaks. And you listen. That's where revelation is given. That's where revelation is given. That's how you find out who you are. You want to know who you are? It's not by meeting with a pastor. It's not by sitting down asking somebody, what did God tell you about me? The question is, what did God tell you about you? Mm -hmm. Some of us are looking to find out who we are and where we fit in. It doesn't come from coming to a conference. We can't give you who you are here. We can only fine tune who you are. But if you really want to find out who you are, you've got to leave us and go up to him. And if you sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Sit, 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 sit. And if you sit with him long enough, he shows you who you are. Hallelujah. In the Bible, Lord Oshebed, I don't have a text. Might as well tell you now, you, whatever you're writing, don't have a text. Put your own title. In the Bible, Jesus sets his disciple aside and says, listen, we just came from town. Who are people saying that I, the son of man, am? Understand the language, the son of man, because they don't know who he really is. They think he is the son of Mary and Joseph. Who are people saying that I, the son of man, am? And 11 of his disciples are clueless. It's not uncommon to be among the congregation who follow Jesus, but really haven't gotten intimate enough to know really who he is. And when you don't know who he is, you're searching to find out who you are. The reason why you don't know who you have really been called to be and you're putting on everybody else's coat trying to make it fit you is because you haven't sat with him and let him tailor this thing to make you your own. 
Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people, excuse me, Sister Teresa, but there are a lot of people that come to this conference trying to fit in. And they pay their money trying to fit in. And they choose their classes trying to fit in. And they network trying to fit in. Trying to put on the cloak of praise and worship. Trying to put on the cloak of ministry. Putting on something that you saw someone else wear. And think that you can wear the same clothes. One size doesn't fit all. Hear me, and this is not this is not a rebuke to you. This is a reproval. And this is your salvation. This is your help. Because there's a station that God has chosen for you before the foundation of the world. And it is your responsibility to go to him and find out what it is. Praise and worship singers. Leaders and musicians. Songwriters and ministers. Trying to find purpose. Confused. Confused. Praise singers that want to be artists. When the only, the only gift that you have is for the, for, the, for the general body, for the church. You ain't called to make records. You're called to usher people into the presence of God. What is, weigh that out. Wait, wait, wait. Recording, bringing people into the presence of God. Which is greater? Hallelujah. Which is greater? People, you want people to know your name? Oh, if they know your name, they're not going to like you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Preachers that want to be, <laughs> let me, I'm going to stop. We're trying to find ourselves, but the only way to find ourselves is through worship. Worship, God delineates us. God shows us. God earmarks us. God labels us. God gives us who we were before we got here. Isaiah, I mean, Ephesians 1 and 4 said, according to us, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy, to be holy. To be holy. We were chosen before we took on the manifestation of flesh. Can I pre- preach, please? I'm trying to be careful. I'm trying to be careful. But let me tell you something. As long as God has been, and he has never come into being, he always is. And as long as God is, I'm not talking about is from here on out. I'm talking about is. Because in God, in eternity, there is no past. So you can't say as long as God was. God never was. He always is. But for the sake of, of our human understanding, as long as God has been, which is endless, we have been. We didn't just come on the scene Pastor Washington, we didn't just come on the scene at the birth of at the birth of us at the at the exit from our mother's matrix. That wasn't the beginning of us. We are ageless. We are eternal beings. In Ephesians 1 and 4, it says we were in him before the foundation. Before he said, Let there be, we were in him. And he knew every one of us and had a purpose for every single one of us. Uh, This is going to be a hard preach here. He was only waiting for the proper time to bring us into this world. All you see in Genesis 1 is the prenatal care. All you see in Genesis, the first chapter, is God setting up the nursery to bring forth his beloved. Genesis 1 is the preparation of a pregnant God. Signal my time because I can cut this short. The preparation of a pregnant God, all the let there be's was because he was having contractions. Every let there 
happy was because there was a kicking. There was a kicking. Mm -hmm. And he had to get things ready and had to put things right in place. Everything has a purpose and all the purposes revolve around man. The separation of firmament from firmament was preparation for man. Let there be light was preparation for man. I don't hear anybody here. The fish in the sea and the fowl in the air was for man. The sun, moon, the stars was for man. The planets was for man. All of it was because God was pregnant. Put the sun in place and the moon in place for gravitational pull to keep all the nine planets in their right orbit and access so that the third rock from the sun could be the nursery. <laughs> Hallelujah. Could be the nursery. And after he had set all things in motion on the sixth day, that's when God said, I'm not going to speak this in. I'm going to do this myself. Reach down and grab dirt out of the earth. Formulated. I'm the kosh behind. Formulated and eh? hardened the ground, mixed it with water and minerals, made a skeletal structure. Y'all don't hear me. Made a skeletal structure. Hallelujah. Looks like nothing but a, and the angels stand back in awe looking at God. Because they've never seen God do this before. Hmm. And then he takes some more dirt and mixes it with water and the very elements of all of his creation is going into this being and he mixes it with water and he starts to make nervous systems and miles and miles of nerves. What is God doing? I don't know. And then he takes some more dirt and he starts to make organs and, and he takes the nerves and he puts them down this hole in the spinal cord and starts to work it all throughout the body. Yeah, he's a wonder. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And then he starts to make organs and a heart and a liver and a spleen and a pancreas and things that we have we've never seen. Put it in the right place. What a wonderful God this is. Put them all strategically in the right place. He's getting this ready. This is not his child. His child is about to be put into this. Good God help me. This is just the housing. My God, look at God work. Take some more dirt. <laughs> Make something called skin. The dermis, the epidermis, and stretches it out and wraps the body tightly so that everything stays in its place. Hallelujah. Takes more dirt and makes follicles one by one. He knows every number of hair on your head. One by one. Uh, he's, he's meticulous in his works. He's meticulous. This is, a, this is not Buddha. We're not talking about Buddha. We're talking about God. He's meticulous in everything he does. And he holds in his hands the body. But it's, an, it's a limp figurine. No life. Arms dangling and legs hanging neck hanging and then God takes this figurine and says now it's time to give birth and he takes this and brings it to his mighty mouth and, and man becomes a living soul and now God says he's in my image and in my likeness and because I breathed him out of me, he's just like me. So when we heard the song that the three women danced to in Psalm 8, you hear angels looking down as they see God leaving daily to go down into Eden. God's never done this before. And angels say, what is man? What is that clay creature that God is so mindful of him? And what is the son of man that God actually gets off of his throne 
and goes down and sits with him and visits with him. For you have made him a little lower. Wrong. Not angels. You've made him a little lower than yourself. Now, for those of you that don't understand where I got that from, if you go and you look up and you, and you examine and you do your exegetical homework, the word angels there in the Hebrew is not angel at all. It is Elohim. That is the word for God. You have only made man a little lower than yourself. And you've crowned him with glory and honor. This poses a problem. How, many, how much more time? Give me, give me, give me. Okay. No. This poses a problem to Satan. This poses a problem to Satan. Dog, I, don't, I don't have the... This poses a problem to the fella who wants to take over. For man is only a little lower than God. So that makes him over angels. Even fallen angels. I'm talking about you, baby. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about Adam. I'm talking about you. Look at somebody say, he's talking about me. And it's time for us to wake up. We have to wake up and realize who we are. And that's why Satan came in stealth into the domain of man. Because when God made man and set him in the garden, he gave him dominion over the whole entire globe. And God made Adam, male and female, the God of this earth as he is God over all. Everything had to go past man because man had dominion. What that mean? That means total authority over the domain. And so Satan could not come in as Satan because if he would have walked in as Satan, Adam had the power to say, get out of here and don't come back. And he would have been barred from the earth. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? So he had to take on the form of that which Adam was accustomed to. He had to take on the form so that Adam would not go up in arms. He had to come in a fashion that Adam was used to. And that's the very thing he does in our lives today. He doesn't come as Satan. He comes in the form that we are accustomed to. So our God is down. And let me, let me fast speed this, fast track this. And Satan through the serpent says to Eve, well not Eve, to woman, he says, can you eat of every tree in the garden? She says, yes. And she rehearses what God told her. For she's been in communion with God. She has been in total communion with God. And she rehearses. Says, yes, every tree but that tree. Can't eat those. Because the day we eat of it, God said we shall die. Satan says, you shall not surely die. But the day that you eat of it, you will become like him. Knowing the difference between good and evil. And the woman was attracted to the sayings of the serpent. Because she was ignorant to the fact that she was already like him. But Satan used the very thing that got him kicked out of heaven. You shall be like the most high. And that's how he got, that's how he lost his position. Because he was trying to be like the most high. I don't hear you here. And Satan figured if it worked for me, it'll work for them. If I got one shot and I failed and there's no hope for me and I can cause them to do the same thing I did, then they'll be kicked out and there'll be no hope for them and I'll have domain here. But he forgot his station. He was not made in the image and likeness of God. <laughs> He was created a ministering angel, a servant. We were created sons. I don't hear nobody in this room. And he beguiles man and man falls. 
And God throws him out of the garden and Satan gets the power. But he didn't read the fine print. Because although you have power, you don't have authority. And you can't use the power without Hallelujah. So everything that Satan does or wants to do, he can't do. Because the only one that has authority, even in his fallen state, is man. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Some of y'all don't believe what I'm saying at all. But Satan can't do what he wants to do. Because the only one that has dominion down here is man. Can I, can I get, I'm a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. On September 11th of 2001, there was two planes that were flown into the World Trade Center. <laughs> Satan did not fly those planes. He wanted to, but he couldn't. He needed authority. And the only way he could have authority is somebody had to give it to him through them. Y'all not hearing me? He wanted to kill, steal, and destroy forever, but he can't do it. That's why the Bible says that your advocate be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, roameth about looking, searching for, because he can't do it readily. He's got to find somebody that will give him permission to devour. I'm, right now, I'm disarming Satan. And I'm putting the power and the authority back into your hands. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Then Jesus came about behind that and said, Behold, I give you power. Satan had the power. You had the authority. But I'm giving the power back to you now. I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of Satan over all the power of demons and nothing shall by any means that word of hurt does not mean not cause you pain it means destroy <laughs> and nothing shall by any means destroy you when you find out who you really are you learn how to use your authority. Hallelujah. And everything that God gave you is used as a weapon against the enemy and as praise to God. I found out myself that I am the authority of God on this earth. I am the righteousness of God. If I am his son, then he has given me authority and dominion. And whatever I bind on earth... Some of y'all ain't catching this. Whatever I bind on earth, God backs me up in heaven. He said, didn't you hear what my son said? Uh, I wish I had some sons and daughters in this room here. I'm finished, I'm finished, I'm finished. I don't have time to really complete this. But you got to go to God so that he can show you who you are. As I tried to say before, and I'm going to finish, sit down. Ten minutes and I'll be done. Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Eleven start speaking and show that they've been walking with the man almost three years and still don't know who he is. They think he's somebody who's going to be made king and that they have position. A lot of that was political. They were following him for political reasons. 
Some say that you're Elijah. Some say that you're Jeremiah. One disciple said, some say you're John the Baptist, raised from the dead. Another disciple said, some say that you're, that, that, that you're Ezekiel, one of the prophets. Jesus listens. He says, okay. Eleven of you are talking. But now, who do you say? That's what they're saying, but who do you say that I am? And 11 voices go mute. And one raises his hand. The 12th disciple raises his hand and says, I know who you are. <laughs> And you are. I can't say this loud because if people hear me, they'll hold me as blasphemous. It'll be accounted as treason for me to say this. If the religious community hears me, they'll kill me. Sometimes religion can hurt you. But it's relationship that gives you revelation. Aha. You are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nobody on earth knows this. Nobody has a clue. You haven't learned this in the synagogue. You haven't learned this at temple. Flesh and blood could not reveal this to you. You've been talking to my father. And because you got this revelation... Would somebody look at your neighbor and say, I need a revelation. Because you got this revelation in worship, worship brings on revelation. Make, make, make note, worship brings on revelation. Because you got this revelation, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What revelation? He said, wait, 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 wait. let me take that back. Because of the, your revelation, I'm going to change your name. That's what I forgot. I'm going to change your name. You are no longer Simon, the son of Jonah. When you really find out who God is, he shows you who you really are. You are no longer the daughter of a broken family. You are no longer the son of a fatherless home. You are no longer poor, broke, busted, and disgusted. You are no longer bound by your addictions and your habits. You are no longer earmarked by the things you did in your past. I don't hear you here. When you really come to a relationship with God, your family won't even know who you are. They think that you're who you've been, but there's been a change in your life. For if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I don't hear you here. All things are passed away and all things become brand new. You are no longer Simon, the son of your mother and father, but you are now Peter, the small stone. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the hell shall not prevail against it. He was not, according to the Roman Catholics, building his church upon Peter. Peter was not the first pope and this is, what not, this is not what he meant. He wasn't building the church upon Peter, but he was building the church upon Peter's revelation. And what was the revelation that he is the Christ hallelujah and upon his deity upon his sovereignty upon him being the Christ the church would be birthed and built but now worship brought on revelation revelation brought on identification and identification now brings on authorization Your name is now Peter. And now I'm going to give you, Peter, the keys to the kingdom. Now I give you back the authority that was once lost. And whatever you bind on earth, I'm going to bind it in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, y'all don't hear me. And the thing is, we're sitting back here 
with the power of God dormant inside of us because we haven't gotten into his presence. But you don't realize that half the things you go through, you shouldn't have to go through. Mm -hmm. I come to find out that half the things I was going through, I didn't have to go through because God gave me the power to bind. God gave me the authority to loose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in 1991, when I had leukemia, I had to pull back on that scripture. When they told me I was going to need to have chemotherapy, I had to pull back on that scripture. When depression hit me, and I thought this was the end of my life, I had to pull back on that scripture. When all the things that were on my body started going wrong, I had to pull back in that scripture. When I started holding blood in my bowels because of my white blood cells, I had to pull that scripture out. I don't hear y'all. When I started to debilitate, I had to pull that scripture out. I had to lean on the authority that God gave me. I had to realize that this is the body that God gave me. But I had an existence before I got in this body. And there is authority that has been given to me. And I, all I got to do is claim what is mine. Use what God gave me. He said whatever I bind is bound. Whatever I loose is loosed. So now I got to start binding. Now I got to start loosing. Now I got to take the very medicine that I give out to other people. And I got to believe the very word that I preach for so long because it's not odd to find that people can preach but when it comes to them they forget every word that they said but God will challenge you I don't hear anybody in this room and I had to go back and I had to get up in the morning fevered side swollen stomach bloated from blood Hallelujah. And I had to make myself go to church. They'd have to come pick me up, take me to the church, walk on both sides of me with 103 fever, and sit down on the second row. And I sat on the second row because the first row didn't have a, a row or a banister in front of it. There's a method to this. Because when it's time to praise him, I need something to hold on to. My body's weak, but my spirit is strong. And when they started dancing, sister, I would hold the pew, 103 fever, bleeding on the inside, and make myself praise him. I will bless the Lord at all times, at times of cancer, times of leukemia. I will bless the Lord, times of tears, times of fears. I will myself to bless the Lord. I don't need somebody take a praise break right here, right here. Oh God! And I made myself dance. And then I started doing something real crazy. And Pastor Wines had to pull me to the side and say, who is you talking to? I said, I'm talking to leukemia. And what I used to say is, if you're going to be here, then watch me praise him. If you're going to be in this body, sit right down here. And watch me praise him. Hallelujah. You got to make your situation watch you. If that demon has been assigned, make him watch you, praise him. Hallelujah. If he's been assigned to your life, make his assignment miserable. Make him watch you, praise Don't care what nobody says about you. Make them watch you praise them. Jesus. Make them watch you. That's right. Just look under your feet where the enemy is and say, watch me praise him. I 
I know who I am because I've been with Jesus. So watch me praise him. I have my identity because I've been with Jesus. So watch me praise him. I've got the authority and everything's about to change. So watch me praise him. I'm about to bind up that thing that's run rampant in my generations. So watch me praise him. I'm about to lose generational blessings so that my children and my children's children and my children's children's children can have the benefit. So watch me praise him. As a matter of fact, I'm going going back to the enemy and I'm taking back what is stole from my mother what is stole from my grandmother and now watch me praise him I will recover everything and I'll give God because I know who I am now somebody give God praise I got to stop Come on, give them praise out of your spirit. I'm That's right. Some of you in poverty right now, tell poverty, watch me praise them. Watch me praise myself right into prosperity. Some of your families are broken. Tell that devil, watch me praise them. You may have hit them, but you won't kill me. And I will champion my family's cause. I will be the salvation of my family. Watch me praise him. Some of you have been struggling with bondage and the enemy has been telling you you can't praise him because of what you're doing and where you are. Tell that devil, watch me praise him. I may be bound, but I'll still praise him. And I'll praise him until the shackles are loosed. Watch me. And when the devil tells you you're a hypocrite, you tell the devil, I've seen that act before. And I know you're just trying to get me to stop praising. I know that I sinned, but I will praise God anyway. And I will give him glory because he's given me a second chance. Something that Satan can never have, a second chance. And don't let him rob you of your second chance. Even if you've fallen, praise him. While you're laying down, I thank you. I praise you because you didn't let me die. I praise you because you give me a chance to get back up again. Praise him. Oh, somebody give God a crazy praise. Hold my shit. made me greater than my sin I am greater than my struggle I am greater than my addiction and God gave me the power to step out of this thing don't you let sin deny you of who you are I feel an anointing here that's right, brother keyboard player. Don't you let sin deny you. I feel the anointing here. Don't you let sin deny you of who you are. You were born to be the son of God. You were born the righteousness of God. Give it to him. Somebody lift up a praise in here. Lift up a bullshit in the old Salamande. Oh, come, Moshati under the bull side. I feel a breaking. I feel a breaking. I hear chains breaking. There's deliverance in here. Oh, Mama Boshi under the bull side. Right now, all those that are in sin, 
Run down here right now if you want to repent. Because just because you're in sin doesn't mean that it's too late. Right now you're going to find deliverance. Everybody in sin, run down. Because you are not counted out. You are just down, but you're not counted out. And right now you're about to get back up again. Don't you go to one of your sessions in sin. Don't you go to one of your classes in sin. Come on, somebody praise them as they come. If there's anybody else, don't feel bad then. You come right now. No condemnation, no condemnation. Nobody pointing a finger. The saints are rejoicing. You come to the conference for such a time as this. Your deliverance was here at this conference. You didn't even know your deliverance was right here. Jesus! 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 Get ready. Your sins are being washed clean right now. When you leave, you're going to be leaving a different person. Get ready, get ready. Thank him for this chance. Thank him that he foiled the plan of the enemy. You are not who they said you are. You are not what you did. You are walking away from that once and for all. And if it means you got to leave people, you'll leave them too. But it's important that you know that you are called to greater stuff than this. Return to who you were before the foundation of the world. Return to who you were before the foundation of the world. I need the oh, I need the every hour. I need the brother Jerome, Pastor Jerome. Don't just touch him. Pray to the Holy Ghost breakthrough. Oh, Mashati Andalabosia. Oh, bless me now. My Savior, no matter how far I've fallen, I come to, to Thee. I need Thee, oh, Macanda la labosia. I ho, Moshe de la labosia. Yes, yes, yes. I need Thee. Yes, God, give it to them. Give it to him. Every hour in the name of Jesus, your Redeemer, be free today. I need thee. Oh, 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 oh bless. Bless me now. Forgive me now, my say, Savior. Father, let the blood of Jesus be applied to every one of these souls. Satan, you are again defeated. Every demon that's been assigned, go back empty-handed. Report back to your master empty-handed. You failed. You could not keep these souls in sin. They are the redeemed of God. They are the called of God. And in the name of Jesus Christ, they rise as sons and daughters, victorious over sin. Let the blood cleanse them. Let the blood purify them. Let the blood make them whole. Receive forgiveness from your Father. You are the true sons and daughters of God. In the name of, you pray as you kneel right now, as you stand and kneel here, 
Those of you that are up in the front, you pray. Ask him to forgive you. You are his son. You are his daughter. You can ask him and he will hear you. You are prodigal, but you've come back home. He will hear you and he will restore to you. He will put the ring back on your finger. Hallelujah. He will kill the fatted calf. He will put his robe across your shoulders. You will wear his righteousness. You have been called for a purpose and you will not let sin interrupt your purpose. You will worship God in truth and spirit. You will worship God in holiness. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Yeah, that's it. Holiness is what I need. Hallelujah. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. Yes, God. Yes, God. You got to be holy. Holiness. Holiness. What I long for. Help my coaster. Somebody say, make me holy. Holiness. Sing holiness. Somebody open your mouth. Sing. What you want for me? Hallelujah. Somebody in the audience, raise your voice. Take my heart. Say, take. Take my heart. Take my mind. Come on. Take my
your sons and daughters, from the holy children, from the righteousness of God. It's what you want for, for the blood washed, for the redeemed. Oh, it's what you want from every man and woman, every boy and girl. Oh, yes. It's what you want. What you want from what you want from and he birthed this in your spirit. You carried this. You carried this, my Baba Bush. You carried this in your spirit. Babash. These souls are byproducts of your obedience. Come to Hallelujah. Righteousness returned is a poor byproduct of your obedience. Hallelujah. Relationship restored is a byproduct of your obedience to God. You've suffered through it. You've organized it as he said. Now you see the fruit of your work. Hum! And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. This is just This is just the Somebody give God praise here. Somebody give God praise here. Somebody give God praise here. Somebody give God praise. Rise, sons. Rise, daughters. Rise, you that are righteous. Rise, you that sins have been forgiven. Your sins, softly, your sins have been washed away. They're not covered. They're washed away. Your sins are not covered. They're washed away. They will never return. And you must never return to it. Go and sin no more. Sit under sound teaching. Even as you go to your workshop classes, you're going new people. Receive every impartation and take it back. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hug each other and say thank God for a second chance. Hug one another and say thank God for a second chance. Go back to your seats praising him. I'm finished. Take my heart. And my Everybody say holiness. No, everybody say holiness. Come. Jesus. Everybody, come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. You ought to praise God for what he has done in this house this afternoon. Do me a favor, just look at somebody and tell them you will never be the same again. Come on, come on, tell them like you really mean it. Tell them you'll never be the same again. Can you praise God for your neighbor's deliverance right now? Oh. Thank the Lord. I think we ought to give Pastor Donnie McClurkin a hand, everyone. 
thank God. Certainly we have heard from heaven this afternoon and certainly this is what gospel heritage is all about. It is all about the transformation of lives. It's all about the transformation of lives being changed for the master's use. Although we are a part of the industry, this is strictly ministry for us. Can somebody give God the praise for it? Thank you, Jesus. Please, as we leave this place, don't forget, amen, we want you to go and purchase the new CD release of Gospel Heritage 2005. My praise is my weapon. And you can purchase this right out front. Please don't forget. Don't want you to forget about tonight. We still have tickets on sale for you tonight. And don't forget that all, amen, delegates, amen, your tickets are half price. Please, tonight's going to be a wonderful night. If you think that you have experienced God, amen, this afternoon, then I want you to come back here tonight because the same, amen, spirit that is flowing in here right now is going to be moved. I feel the Holy Ghost still right now. Ah, Oh, I thank the Lord. You be back here tonight. I believe that the stage, amen, was set. Amen for tonight's worship. Amen. It's going to be more than just an award show, but it's going to be a worship. It's going to be a worship experience. Somebody clap your hands right here, right? Come on, somebody open your mouth right here. I'm trying to be obedient and, and give you your final announcements, but I still feel another praise in this house. Oh, shaman, I, I, I still feel the glory of the Lord in this house. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor taught us this morning, thank God that your praise will get you to this worship experience. And right now, somebody ought to give him a praise. Somebody ought to just yell, scream, jump, holler, do something. Jump on one leg, jump on both legs. Somebody ought to praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on, somebody. Look at somebody that's looking at you like you lost your mind and tell them I got to get to the worship part of things. Come on, tell them I got to get to the worship part of things. And if my praise is going to get me to the worship, then let me praise him right now. Let me give him the glory right now. Let me go. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. Glory to God. I got two more announcements to give you and we're going and I'm trying to stick to what my job was but just look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm in the worship mode I'm in the worship mode come on tell somebody I'm in the worship mode <laughs> thank God look at your neighbor and say neighbor neighbor now, you need to get in the worship mode <laughs> how do we get there we got to praise him right now, now we got to open up our mouth right now, now we got to clap our hands right now, now we got to yell right now somebody say yeah don't worry about somebody I feel a dance breaking out in here now. I said I feel a dance breaking out here now. Oh, ba 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 ba, sama. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I tell you what. I tell you what we're gonna do so we can get out of here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. If we're gonna do this, let's do this together. Look at everybody in your row and say, Ro, I need something right now from God. And it's going to take a worship experience to get me there. And I got to get to the worship through the praise. So tell everybody in your row, help me to praise him right now. Everybody dance, everybody dance, everybody praise him. So we can get to that worship part. Clap your hands, everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody. My God, thank God for 
our gospel heritage. Thank God for the 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 gospel heritage. Thank God. Thank God. A place where deliverance and power and freedom is available. Go ahead, y'all. Clap your hands. Come on. Everybody clap your hands right now. Get tonight, be back here tonight. Come back with this praise and come back with this worship. Thank God. Let's turn this award service upside down tonight. Thank God. Let's take it old school. Come on, y'all, not saying nothing. Clap your hand and say, We're gonna turn it upside down tonight. Oh, God, God, God. Let's praise him. Put your hands together. Listen, we are we are praisers and we are worshipers. So we don't ever finish. We don't ever finish. But let's carry this spirit into the rest of the day, into the rest of the conference, into the rest of the weekends, festivities, into the rest of our lives. As we journey back, let's remember, because I don't know about you, but I know I will never be the same after this experience here. Let's just give God another wave offering and a hand clap and a praise. 
and speak out of your mouth. Thank him. Thank God again for the vessel that he used to speak unto his people. My friend and brother, Pastor Donnie McClurkin, come on, let's bless the Lord again for him. Hallelujah. The choir competition is taking place immediately. Am I right? We're going directly there from this place. And, uh, and we're going to let the spirit go up in there. Say amen, somebody. Also, please don't forget about tomorrow night. Touch somebody, say tomorrow night. Tremaine Hawkins shall also record live here. Yeah, you can give it up for Sister Tremaine. That's right here at Reed Temple in this beautiful edifice. Again, we thank God for Pastor Lee P. Washington. Amen. And I don't think we could ever say enough for the visionary and the staff and the board members that bring us together year after year. Amen. With this fantastic conference. Come on, let's bless the Lord for Dr. Teresa and the Board of Governors. On tomorrow night, again, Sister Tremaine Hawkins recording live. Tickets are also out there, and uh, everything is being uniformed. So uh, the same special that is taking place for the Heritage Awards for tonight is the same special that you can get for the Tremaine Hawkins recording on Saturday. You must have your, your delegate uh, ID. If you don't have your delegate ID, you'll pay the regular price, which is 20 five dollars but please go out there and secure your your ticket that you may be a part of this historic legendary experience we thank god for writers like pastor donnie mcclerklin and we thank god for writers like bishop walter hawkins we thank god for also brother kirk carr yeah and uh kirk carr and a few of his singers the kirk carr singers are backing up Sister Tremaine on tomorrow night, along with a few uh, Brother Richard Smallwood singers. And Richard Smallwood himself, amen, is also participating. So it's just too many to name, but you want to be in the place, all right? That is tomorrow at 5 o'clock right here. Say amen, somebody. And it starts at 5, so that gives you enough time to... Enjoy yourself and those that are traveling on tomorrow night. We want to also pray God for your your traveling mercies Amen that he would dispatch angels of grace and mercy all over again for each and every one of us as we are standing Sir we're standing We're not really dismissing we're just moving on so Let's just turn to someone and just let them know that you love them with the love of the Lord and give them a great big hug Show some love love is an action word We just simply ask that God would bless you for the remainder, and we look forward to seeing you all back here on tonight. Amen. This isn't the benediction. We're just going to continue in service. Say amen, somebody. God bless you.